welcome to the Quilted Lizard Fiber Art Studio. I'm Karen Eckmeyer and today I'm going to teach you how to make layered leaves. The leaves are made using my top stitch curve technique and we're going to make one pair of leaves today. We're going to make about a five inch block. Behind me you see these are one and a half inch blocks. So I'm not going to show you exactly how to do those but once you learn the basics you'll be able to make a leaf any size you like. So the technique we're using today is a curves that are top stitched and it's free form cutting. And if you look closely, you'll see that all my leaves are not exactly the same size. They're just a little bit different. So it's okay. Um, don't worry about them being exactly the same size. That's the charm. Mother Nature makes leaves different sizes also. Um, you'll notice here that the top stitching is done about an eighth of an inch from the edge. I like that look. It gives it a little extra texture. You can stitch closer if you like. And here's an example of the smaller leaves. So let me show you how this is done. To make our leaf box, we're going to start out with two six and a half inch squares. One is dark, one is light. They don't have to be greens, but we want a high contrast. So I've got my dark and my light. And this would be if I were doing a, a tinier one. Here, we'll put that up there for now. So this is free form cutting, alrighty? But I'm going to give you some guidelines. Um, the first, I'm going to mark a little mark here one and a half inches in from the right corner and then I'm going to mark oops my my squares are not totally aligned but don't worry about it we want it as close as possible all right we're not aiming for precision here and then from here we're going to mark one and a half inches down from this top and I'm going to mark there and there so I've got my two marks and this is probably the squarey part for some of you I am going to free form cut this curve. If I cut way up like this, I'm going to have a fat leaf. If I'm really gentle with my curve, I'm going to have a skinny bamboo leaf. Both are right. You're going to find out what your comfort zone is. So with that said, I'm going to just cut a curve, excuse my elbow, and do my first cut. So here we have that first cut. The second two cuts are going to be one and a half inches um, down from here and let me just see here that's the one I want <laughs> I got myself too prepared alrighty here we go so in this piece the mark is going to go one and a half inches from here I'm going to mark it like so and one and a half inches up like so now I could freeform cut that again, but I've learned that if I just flip this curve that I've already cut and I put it on here, then this curve will exactly mimic the first one. So that one's not as freeform. Um, you can do it freeform. So I just use that to mark and I'm going to go ahead and cut that just like so. All right. So now we have the components of our two leaf blocks. We have our two leaves, we have our two large arcs, and our two smaller arcs. And that is what we are, we're finished with our cutting, and now I'm going to press the concave curves toward the back. So here are our six shapes. These are the leaves, like I said before, we don't have to do anything to those. But we are going to press the curved, the concave edges of those four pieces only. So I'm turning the piece over and I'm doing about a quarter inch turnover. Okay. You can probably hear that I have steam in my iron. That is fine. That helps keep the edges stay flat. Um, you can use a spray starch also. I'm just going <clears> to, <throat> the bias of the fabric really helps you with this, so it just really wants to go that way. We just wanted it down enough that we have a nice crisp edge 
on this other side. So one more to do, and then we're ready to put our leaf pair together. Alrighty. Now we're ready to take this to the sewing machine and do our top stitching. Okay, we're ready to top stitch now, and we're going to take a light leaf and put it with one of the smaller arcs, and the dark leaf with another smaller arc. You can just tell, see that's the smaller, so that's the one that we want to start with. And I'm going to eyeball, I'm going to just say that's about the center of that. I'm going to overlap it only a quarter inch, like a seam allowance. And on the ends here, it's only going to overlap or extend about the width of your finger. And I'm just going to pin that in place because I don't want it to move. On the little tiny, tiny leaves, I'll sometimes just do a little dab of glue to hold it in place. Okay, so I've got that pinned. Alright, now I'm ready to do my top stitching. I'm going to start right at the end here. I don't have to start all the way here. I'll start right where this leaf meets the dark green. Take that pin out. And I'm using a variegated green. Um, it's, it, I like that it contrasts. Uh, if you don't have a variegated, you just pick one color or the other. It's okay if you have light thread on dark and vice versa. So just pick one thread to do all of your top stitching. And I'm lining the outside edge of my curve with the inside edge of my toe of the presser foot. You might want to pivot a couple times with that first go around and make sure we're still clear here. Okay, I have the first two top stitched. There isn't any waste on the back. Alrighty, you should have this quarter inch seam on the back. Sometimes it's not exactly perfect as long as you've caught the fabric and you don't have a hole. Now that we have our first two arches on, we're going to put the second two on, the larger arcs. And we're going to do that the same way we put the first one on. I'm going to just try to find the center there, overlap it about a quarter inch. And on this one, it's going to extend beyond maybe two fingers width, okay? This is exact measurement, as you can tell. So it overhangs a little bit there. And again, I'm only overlapping about a quarter inch. I'm not wasting fabric. Same here. Now we're ready to top stitch. Okay, I've made my two blocks. The only thing I have to do now is to just trim this even. I'll, I'll square it up later, but for right now it's just those little tabs that'll come off the edges. And when we turn it over, the only thing that you're going to trim, and you don't have to, but I like to reduce the bulk, is these little tabs there on each end. And notice we don't have any other fabric waste. And I'm going to trim this piece and this piece. So that is how we make our layered leaves blocks. Let me take you over to the uh, design wall and I'll show you some ideas of how to put these blocks together. So now you've made a few leaf blocks. What do you do with them? 
a real easy way to put them together is to assemble them vertically, um, put it all together to make, uh, I, this is a baby quilt size or lap quilt size, it could be any size actually. These are top stitched together so you'll notice they're all different sizes. Um, they could be squared off and you can piece them together uh, with traditional piecing. Um, here's another version of, instead if you don't want to do that many leaves, you can just do one column. And here we have a nice table runner for fall, or we can change the colors. And here we have, I kind of think these are spring colors. And so if this is interesting to you and you'd like to learn more about it and maybe how I embellish the leaves with the yarn and, and other possibilities of adding them to rose twirls. This is not in the book, but the rose twirls and combining leaves and rose twirls are in the book, Wiggles and Waves. Um, so I would, uh, I th would suggest that uh, if you want the written instructions, you can go there or check out my website and you'll see some of the quilts, uh, larger art quilts that I've made using this technique. I love to do curves, I love to top stitch, and I love to share it with you. Hope you had fun. Thanks for joining me.